All right, welcome to Pi Mathematics. We're gonna use a pizza pie to figure out what really pi is and then use it to find the area of a circle. So first things first, we're gonna take our tape measure. We're gonna measure the distance around, which in math, in the math world we call the circumference. So all I'm gonna do is take this flexible tape measure and bring it all the way around and it is approximately, looks like 91 centimeters. I can remember that. And I'm gonna find the diameter, which is the longest distance through the center. And I'm estimated about 29 centimeters. Now, mind you, probably expect a little bit of error here, okay? So let's see, I create a ratio of circumference divided by the diameter which was equal to 91 centimeters divided by 29 centimeters. And we get, let's see, 91 divided by 29 is equal to, voila, 3.1379-ish. Now, do you recognize that number? That's right, that's practically pi. Now. Our pi approximation that we normally see is 3.14. So with this pizza and this really bad tape measure, we got approximately pi. So mathematicians long ago adopted Greek letter and call it pi. So pi is approximately or is exactly circumference divided by the diameter. Basic algebra tells me that circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. And this is gonna be critical for the next part. All right, so now we're gonna use the pizza to come up with an approximation for the area of a circle. Now, what I'm about to show you, I didn't invent this. This is actually probably thousands of years old, dating back to Archimedes. Let's see what maybe these mathematicians did a long time ago. All right, here we go. We're gonna take this pizza and we're going to slice it. All right, let's see, I got one shot at this and hopefully I went right through the middle. And I'm gonna slice it this way. Had to go get the thick crust pizza, didn't I? All right, so that gives me four slices, but to show you what I want to demonstrate, it's not enough. Let's do two more slices, creating eight pieces. Not bad, I'm getting hungry just doing this. All right, let's go one more slice right through the center. Now you're probably wondering, who am I gonna share this with? Well. No one yet. All right, so I'm gonna take these eight slices and I'm gonna kind of bring them apart. Almost, I'm gonna make this tooth-like pattern. So I'm gonna put it here, put it here, put it here. Now watch what I do with these remaining four pieces. I'm gonna open them up this way and I'm gonna stick them together. But before I do, I want you to notice something. All the cross together was the circumference of the circle. Therefore, one side of the crust is half the circumference. Now let me piece this over and then we're gonna to go to the board. I want you to see something. So we're gonna piece that together. Beautiful. Okay, now come to the board a second. Earlier, we saw that circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Now, we know that diameter is twice the radius. So if I'm interested in half the circumference, I'm gonna take half of both sides. This side just stays half circumference, where in this side, something algebraically happens. Half of two is one, so in theory, they cancel out. I like to say, well, it reduces to one there. But that leaves you with pi r. So remember, this distance here, this arc plus this arc plus this arc plus this arc 
is equal to pi times r. Now let's look at this piece right here. This long piece, well, you know what that is. That's the radius of the pizza. So right now, we got a weird looking shape. Well, I got an idea. I'm gonna show you what they did thousands of years ago. I need my slicer and we're gonna have at it, so get ready. Here we go. We're gonna slice it again. And again. And again. Again. And again. And one more time. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to create those teeth like shape again and piece them together. Okay. So now you can see that this is still half the uh, half the circumference, which is pi times r still. This length now, well, that's still your radius, but something's starting to happen to that weird parallelish gram shape with some arcs. These arcs are starting to get smaller. You might even see they're starting to flatten out again. Okay, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it one more time. Get ready. You don't have to be Italian to do this. at this point, but theoretically, here's what's going on. All these little arcs got smaller and smaller and smaller. And in theory, they started to straighten out. So, all these little humps, little, 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 notice this radius also starts to straighten out. Little, 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 little. The radius straightens out. And our shape takes on what appears to be a rectangle. Now, how many times can I do this? Well, I could do it an infinite number of slices. Well, look at this. It's gotten pretty messy already, so I think we'll stop now. But what you can see starting to happen as this all starts to straighten out, this is pi times r, and this straightens out to the radius. And it looks like we got a rectangle. Now remember, the area of a rectangle is length, pi times r, times its width, r. Now wait a second, it kind of looks familiar. Pi times r times r is pi r squared. Holy cow, the area of that circle is pi r squared. Hey, looks like it only took a little bit of pizza to get the right answer. And not bad. Well, best of luck. Here's the area of a circle with pi.